This is the second video on logarithm revision for A-level students. So just a quick reminder, these are aimed at students doing A-level or equivalent mathematical courses around the age of 17, 18. And the intention is not to teach logarithms, but rather to demonstrate how to solve typical problems that come up in examinations. Now, when you're answering a question, it's important that you set out two things before you start, not only what information is provided in the question, but also what information or knowledge it's assumed you already have. And it's usually by combining these two together that it's obvious how to solve a question. So what we're going to emphasize as we go through these questions is how we use two, the second one, writing down the knowledge we've already got, as a key tool for solving the questions. So what are the key logarithm formula that you would be expected to know and use in an examination? Well, first of all, you need to know the definition. Here it is. If you have the log to the base x of some big number a equals little a, then that's the same as saying x to the power of little a equals capital A. So that's a definition for a log. And you should also know that if you do the log of 1, you will always get 0. It doesn't matter what the base x is. The product rule. This is probably the most common one. So if you do the log of a product, it's the same as the sum of the logs. So log of AB is the same as log A plus log B. And similarly, you have this quotient law, which says the log of A over B is the same as log A minus log B. There was also the power law, which was the subject of the previous video in this series. So log of A to the power K is K log A. And the final observation is you should know that if you take the log of the same number as the base, so log x of x, you will get 1. And if you combine that with a power law, you get things like log x of x to the r gives you r. So what we're saying is you should be familiar with all of these statements and properties because you're not sure in advance which of them you'll need for any question that comes up. First question then, without using a calculator, this is key without using a calculator, solve the following. So you see you've got two possibilities. So you've got x equals log to the base 5 of 125 and y equals log to the base 5 of 1 over 25. Now, what we're going to do is write down the log property that's needed. Clearly, we're doing log to the base 5. So we might be using this property here. Log to the base 5 of 5 equals 1. That's worth knowing. We might also want the power property, so log to the base 5 of 5 to the r equals r. And those are the obvious ones that I might want to use. So let's have a look at what we've got. Well, hopefully you can see by inspection that 125 equals 5 to the power 3. And therefore log to the base 5 of 125 is the same as log to the base 5 of 5 cubed, which is the same as 3 log 5 of 5, which clearly gives you 3. And hopefully you'll see how straightforward that question was, as long as you knew this rule here and this rule over here. What about the second one? y equals log to the base 5 of 1 over 25. So here we're going to recognize that 1 over 25 equals 5 to the power minus 2. And again, I think the examiner would expect that you could spot that one um, by inspection. And so therefore, log to the base 5 of y equals log to the base 5 of 5 to the minus 2. So now I can use my power rule, which gives me minus 2 log to the base 5 of 5, which clearly gives me minus 2. So again, you see how straightforward these questions can be, as long as you know your basic properties. Next question then. A similar question, so we won't go through the uh, background, except what you'll notice is now we're doing log to the base 4. So before you start, write this down log to the base 4 of 4 equals 1. Then it's in your face and you won't forget it. And write this one down. Log to the base 4 of 4 to the power r 
gives me R because clearly the question is going to involve properties of this type and if you write them down you won't forget about them and you'll use them. So what do you need to recognize? Well hopefully it's obvious to you that 64 is just 4 to the power 3 and therefore if I'm doing log to the base 4 of 64 that's the same as log to the base 4 of 4 cubed which is the same as 3 log 4 of 4 which just gives me 3. Now obviously don't forget the question actually had a minus in so you'd have to put that minus back for the final answer. What about the next one? The next one's a bit more tricky because you're looking at this 2 and this 16 and you're saying just a minute they don't obviously depend on 4 but they do actually so I'm going to show you how. So 2 is actually 4 to the power a half and 16 is 4 squared and these again are the sorts of things that examiners would expect you to spot because they're not tricky. Everybody knows that 2 is the square root of 4 and they also know that the power that gives you a square root is a power of a half. So it's testing some bits of knowledge that you might not think of straight away. So what am I going to have here? So I've got z equals log to the power 4 of 4 to the half over 4 squared which is the same as log to the power 4 of 4 to the minus 1.5. And once you've got to that stage, you'll see this clearly is minus 1.5 log to the power 4 of 4, which just gives you minus 1.5. Next one then, another sort of typical question that might come up in an exam, and you'll see what they're doing here is they're saying don't use a calculator, and you're given some sort of value that log to the base 7 of x equals c, and therefore solve for the following problems. So again, what you need to do is write down the sorts of properties that you think you might need. So I'm going to write down, well I might need this power one, that seems to come up a lot, log 7 of a to the power k is k log 7 of a. I might need this one that log to the base 7 of 7 is 1, so just make sure I've got that. And also, because you can see I've got things like a 7 times x or an x divided by 49, I might need the product rule or I might need the quotient rule. So before you start, write them down, make sure you know what they are. And now I can move on. So I'll start with log to the 7 of 7x. So log to the 7 of 7x using the product rule is clearly log to the 7 of 7 plus log to the 7 of x. And then what you notice, well log to the 7 of 7, we've got up here, log to the 7 of x, we've got here, so clearly the answer is just 1 plus c. And you'll notice how straightforward that question was. If you start by writing down all these key properties, <coughs> it's immediately obvious what you have to do. What about the next one? Log 7 of x over 49. Well, log 7 of x over 49, again using the quotient rule, is just log 7 of 7 minus log 7 of 49 and that is clearly just going to be 1 minus log 7 of 7 squared I've uh, sorry I made a silly mistake there I'm just getting it wasn't log 7 of 7 it was log 7 of x so that one there is obviously C. Apologies for that. So you've got C minus log 7 of 7 squared. And you should know by now that log 7 of 7 squared is 2. So you just end up with C minus 2. So again, hopefully you'll see that these questions are relatively straightforward. A similar question, just to reinforce the point. So again, write down all the log properties you think you might need. So we might need this power function log to the 7 of a to the power k is k log 7 of a. We might need to know that log 7 of 7 is 1, and we might need the product rule and the quotient rule. So I'm putting them down so they're there when I need them and I don't make a silly mistake. So now I can write that log 7 of 7 over x squared is clearly log 7 of 7 minus 
log 7 of x squared. So what I've done there is I've used this quotient rule. Next, I'm going to use this power rule because I've got an x squared. So I can write this as log 7 of 7 minus 2 log 7 of x. So let's use the power rule. Then I look at the information given in the question that log 7 of x equals c. I look at this other information that I've written down that I know log 7 of 7 is 1. And you see you get 1 minus 2c. So you'll notice again how combining information that I'm giving with information that I bring into the question myself makes the solution extremely straightforward. What about the next one then? So this one's got a combination of the product rule and the quotient rule. So what you're going to have is log 7 of 49 root x over x squared is going to be, and you can write this out in two stages or three stages, but you're going to have log 7 of 49 plus log 7 of root x minus log 7 of x squared. Now, I do happen to know, and I'm running out of space, so I'm going to squeeze it in the bottom here, just in case you miss it, that root x equals x to the half. So I'm going to use that because it makes my life easier. So now what I've got is log 7 of 7 squared, so that's the 49, plus a half log 7 of x so that's come from the root x by writing the root x as x to the power half. And then I've got minus 2 log 7 of x. And now you can see, of course, that using this power rule, the log 7 of 7 squared is just 2. I've been given at the top that log 7 of x equals c. So I've got plus a half c from here and minus 2c from here. Here. So again, you see that the answer is relatively straightforward. Next one then. Without using a calculator, express the following as a single term. And again, what I'm going to do is start by writing down the formula I think I might need. I might need the power rule, so I've written that out again, and I might need the product or the quotient rule. So I've put them all down, and let's see where we go. So in this one, I'm going to go backwards. So instead of extracting the power from the log, you see I've got a 5 there, I'm going to put it back in. So I'm going to write things like 5 log d of 21 equals log d of 21 to the power 5. And next I'm going to use this product rule because you'll, sorry, not the product rule, the quotient rule with this minus because you'll notice I've got a minus here. So I'm going to write z equals log d of 21 to the 5 divided by 9 over 49 squared. So you'll see I've noticed that the quotient rule is implicit in what I've been given, so I've applied it. And so if I put this all together, you'll see what you end up with is log d of 21 to the 5 times 49 squared all over 9 squared. Now this might look like a bit of a mess, but hopefully you'll accept that up to now the algebra has not actually been too difficult. Now what you might need to do next is recognize common factors. So what I'm going to do is write it out longhand. So 21 to the 5 is going to be 3 to the power 5 times 7 to the power 5, and then you've got 7 to the power 4 from the 49 squared, and then you've got 9 squared which is 3 to the power 4. And so you'll see what you end up with is log d of 3 times 7 to the 9. And you can reduce that slightly if you really want to, but I don't think we need to go any further. What about this one? Again, without using a calculator, express the problem, the following, as a single term. And again, you'll see here that all it's really testing is do you know the product rule? that the log of a product is the sum of the logs, or the quotient rule, that the log of a quotient, you subtract the two logs, and you'll see I've got a minus in here and a plus in here. So you can write down by inspection that x equals log 8 of 24 times 4 squared divided by 
32. Because what you'll see is the minus is on the 32, so I'm going to divide by the 32, and the plus is on 2 log 4, which is the same as log of 4 squared. Now, of course, you can simplify the algebra on this slightly if you really need to. So you could now write things like log 8 of 3 times 8 times 4 squared, all divided by 4 times 8, and you see that's going to give you log 8 of 12. Final question then. So without using a calculator, solve for z. And again, the same sort of technique. Let's write down the sort of expressions that we might need. So this is based on log 3, but we think we might need the product rule. We might need the quotient rule to write them down. We might need the power rule. And we might also need to recognize that log 3 of 3 equals 1. And let's go from there then. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that log 3 of 9z can be written as log 3 of 9 plus log 3 of z. So that's that term. The log 3 of z squared over 27 can be written as plus log 3 of z squared minus log 3 of 27. So there I'm using the quotient rule. And I've got a 1 on the right hand side. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this product rule, sorry, this power rule, in combination with log 3 of 3 is 1. So log 3 of 9 is the same as log 3 of 3 squared. And log 3 of 27, I've got minus log 3 of 3 cubed. And then with the z's, I've got plus log 3 of z. And log 3 of z squared gives me plus 2 log 3 of z. And that all equals 1. So what I can do now, if I use a different colour, you'll see that this is clearly 2, this number is clearly 3, and then I've got plus 3 log 3 of z equals 1. And finally, if I just bring all the numbers onto the one side, that gives me log 3 of z equals so I should have 3 log 3 of z there, shouldn't I? 3 log 3 of z equals 2. Or z, oh sorry, I didn't mean z. I meant to write, so therefore log 3 of z equals 2 over 3. So the final hardest questions will be in the next video.